job. Job that passed my, my first church I ever joined down in North Carolina. The, the pastor was from Kenya. That's what he called the book of Job was job. <laughs> Didn't really. Yeah. And hypocrites were hypocrites. <laughs> Job what? Job chapter 25. Now, last week we, we covered the new birth. Tonight we're going to start talking about what happens when a man is born again. Now the Bible reveals God does at least 38 things for you the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 38 of them. They're all right there in the Bible. They're for you to learn. God doesn't, I mean, if you don't read it, He's not going to show it to you. And if you want peace and assurance of your salvation, then you better get in the book and read what God's salvation. It's His salvation. Amen. Not yours. It's His work. And you have to learn about it. It's not anything you're doing. It's something He's done. It's something He did. something He's doing. Right now in you. And I was going to start tonight with the baptism of the Spirit into the body of Christ. But I got home late, didn't get I just couldn't get studied up quick enough, so I decided to start with this one tonight. But in Job chapter 25, beginning in verse 4, the Bible of Bildad is speaking here, and he says, he, he, let's go back up to verse 2. Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom doth not his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Pretty two interesting questions there. The first question he asks is the most important question an individual man faces in this life. How can a man be justified with God? That's the most important question that you as an individual have to find the answer to before you die. Amen? Because the Bible said it is appointed once on the man to die, and after this, the what? Judgment. judgment. So if after you die, you're going to face judgment, then how to be justified with God is a very, very important issue. Amen? It's not the most important issue in the Bible. It's not the most important issue to God. You're not the center of the universe. Amen? God will let you die and go to hell. Now, all these people that's been fooled by religion for years and years and years, they've got it in their mind that there's nothing more important than them. Christianity has been cuddling them and making them feel special for all their life and making them think there's nothing more important than them and their feelings and their prosperity and how they feel and all this stuff. And that's not what the Bible teaches at all. Amen. I've read the Bible. The Bible is a very negative book when it's talking about mankind. It's negative from Genesis to Revelation. If the whole book was positive about men, why do you think men hate it? We're going to see some of the negativity in the Word of God. And in fact, we got this saying in America today, there's power in positive thinking. Right? Think positive. Think positive. But I'm here to tell you that there's actually power in negative thinking. You will never see the world for what it is, and you'll never be, be in God's good graces and, and a place where God can actually use you and reveal things to you until you start taking a negative outlook. You with me? When God looks upon man, we're going to see when God looks down upon the world how He sees mankind. And it's negative. There's not one positive in 12 verses when He's describing mankind. Not one positive. Amen? How can a man be justified with God? If men don't find the answer to this, they'll be guilty before God. How many of y'all? How many of y'all have condemned yourself in your heart as guilty? Then this is a pretty important question, isn't it? Amen. How can a man be justified with God? What does the word justification mean? Write it up here. 
be justified means that you are declared free of guilt. How can a man be declared free of guilt with God? I've lied. I've stole. I've stole from my own mother. Amen? Had sex out of wedlock. Amen? Committed adultery, fornication. I've blasphemed God. Wow. The Bible says whosoever is angry at his brother without a cause is in danger of judgment. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. That's what the Bible says. How many of you have hated somebody before? How can we be declared free of guilt with God? Now you need to know something about God. Come to Isaiah 45. If God's the judge, then you need to know something about the judge. People come up with it. When you look, when you've done any amount of witnessing and soul winning like I have, you hear the stupidest stuff. Well, I just believe if I try my best. Yeah. Go kill somebody and then see if a judge looks at it that way. Go kill somebody and then stand before a judge and say, Well, I've done my best. He's still going to lock you up. Might even give you the gas. And you think a holy, righteous God will not do better than an earthly judge when it comes to righteousness? Abraham asked him one time when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham said, Shall not the judge of the earth do right? Do you think God will do right? Amen. You see, pe people... Are, People think God's going to judge Charles Manson and Adolf Hitler, but they don't see themselves under the same judgment. And Paul's going to talk about this in Romans chapter 2 when we get there. Amen? Look at Isaiah 45 and verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God, you see it? And a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. Did you see where he said he was a just God and a Savior? What does the word just mean? It means legally and morally right. The judge of the earth, whatever he does, must be legally and morally right. So if he's going to declare a man free of guilt, he has to do it in a way that makes him legally and morally right. God would let every one of you go to hell forever before he himself would be unjust. God will not suffer himself to be unrighteous. He will not suffer himself to be unjust. And if there's no way of declaring guilty men free of guilt and him keep his righteousness and his justice, then God will let you go to hell. He doesn't love you that much. You have to understand that God loves himself above all. Right. And his integrity and his righteousness and his morality and his justice is more important than you. <laughs> Amen? Now people have a hard time understanding these things. They've been told that, well, God hates sin, but He loves the sinner. Nonsense. That's not what your Bible teaches at all. Amen. The Bible said He's angry with the wicked every day. Right. David said in the Psalms, He hateth all workers of iniquity. Hateth them. Not the iniquity, not the sin. He hates the worker of iniquity. In Proverbs it says, These six things do I hate. Yea, seven is an abomination, a proud look, a lying tongue, feet swift to mischief, hands that shed innocent blood, and then the last one he mentions is he that soweth discord among brethren. Not the discord. He hates the man that sows it. So this nonsense of 
God's all love, God's all love, God's all love. You know what they're making him? A pervert. If all you do is love, then you're a pervert. Because that means you love pedophilia, rape, murder, theft. Amen. A God that doesn't hate some things and hate some people is not a righteous God. Amen. Now God loved, loved us. Past tense. We read that verse the other night. God so loved. Is that past or present? God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. When? 2,000 years ago. And that Son died on a cross. That's God's love for the world. It doesn't exist up here. It was a one-time thing back here. The Bible said, He that believeth on the Son hath life. He that believeth not the Son hath not life. But the wrath of God abideth on him presently. Right. The wrath of God abides on him. Not the love of God. The wrath of God. That's past tense. Now when he's talking about the church... He says, he says that the world may know that thou lovest them as thou hast loved me. You see? The love for the church is present. We've, we've come to God through the cross. We're no longer under His wrath. We're under grace and peace. Amen. Amen? We're going to look at all this stuff. But just remember that God, when you face God in judgment, He has to be legally and morally right. Now, just think about this for a second. If God judges you according to your works, can He declare you free of guilt and He Himself be legally and morally right? He'd be a liar. If He judged you according to your works and found you guilty and then said you're not guilty, what's that make Him? A liar. So what we're looking for is a, how can God justify a guilty man and he himself be just in doing so. That's what you're looking for. Romans chapter 1, this is where we'll be camping the rest of the night. Y'all understand this. God has to be just when He justifies. And I don't understand how people think uh, you got a church out there, the Church of Christ. Baptismal regeneration. We're saved by baptism. How in the world do you think it makes God just to declare you free of guilt because you took a bath? <laughs> Amen. Huh? <clears throat> well, well, all right. Turning over a new leaf, I'm not going to do any of the bad stuff anymore. How does, that, how does that take care of your guilt in the past? That's where a lot of people do. They try to cleanse a guilty conscience by doing good works. And it'll never cleanse the conscience. Amen. I've been there. I've done it. Even as a Christian, you're tempted that when you, when you do sin against God and confess it, you want to try to make up for it by going out and doing a lot of good. And that thing will stay there. There's only one thing that can cleanse the conscience of man, and it's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's Hebrews. And I've seen it work in my life time and time again. Good works won't get rid of it. Praying won't get rid of it. You know what gets rid of it? Believing what God said. Faith. We're going to we'll look at that verse later on. Like, look at Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. His wrath is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men. Where is it revealed, Jamie? Where is the place it's revealed from heaven? One's conscience. It's revealed in the conscience. History. History. It's revealed in, it's revealed in government today. They are executors of the wrath of God. That's Romans chapter 13. The wrath of God is revealed all around you, folks. Amen. We punish evil work all the time. We punish it in our children. We punish it on... We, we execute judgment upon criminals. God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, not just some of it. 
all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, notice this, who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godheads and the favor without excuse. That's Stephen Hawking, Richard Dawkins, uh, 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 Neil deGrasse Tyson, all the atheists. The Bible just... What were those six things again that God hates? Proud look, lying tongue, feet swift to mischief, hands that shed innocent blood, man barehood. It's wrong unless man <laughs> makes it morally right. <laughs> Right there in Romans it said that God hath revealed unto all mankind His eternal power and Godhead. He's revealed that He's there. Amen? Did you get that? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Where? In the creation. Anybody that can look at it and thinks it just showed up by sheer chance is an idiot. They're stupid. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14 and 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And that's who makes up the majority of our science textbooks. Or fools. Who, who, who have studied it more than us and have concluded there is no God. Do you know the human eye? Listen to me. It's poorly designed. One single cell amoeba is more complicated than any computer we have. And all it'll do in its lifetime is crawl across the pond about that far. You need a microscope to see it. And it's more complex than our computers. And you've got a billion cells just in the human eyeball. Yeah, it's poorly designed. That's what that guy said. I'd like to see him make one. Hey, man. Yeah. It's, that, it's, uh, yeah, this debate, we watch this sign sitting there saying, I look around me and I see, I don't see anything intelligently designed. Do it better. Yeah. <laughs> Smart aleck. <laughs> Nonsense. Hey, man. Hey, man. God hath revealed Himself in creation and He's revealed His wrath from heaven Amen. against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Why? Look, look down there in verse 21. They're without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. That's America. Amen. And I'm going to show you, going through this chapter, why America's in the shape it's in today. They took two fault, faulty steps that led them to where they are today. Amen. Not giving God the glory as God and not being thankful. Amen. You live in a country where you can scratch up some change out of your ashtray in your car, go to a window, a box, yell a number, and pull around to a window, and they throw food at you in a bag. And Americans are the most grumbling, complaining beings on planet Earth. Amen. Man, I, listen, listen, I have bad days, but I try to keep this mindset. I've talked to Shinola about this. I'm driving my motor down the road at work, and I hit a big hole, and it bounces me up, and I crack my back, and I'm like, oh! So I, I try to remind myself, that pain means you have a job. It's what I try to do. Be, be, folks, be scared of an unthankful heart. Amen. Amen. It'll take you somewhere you don't want to be. The Bible says giving thanks always for all things. Amen. That means sickness. That means suffering. Amen. That means poverty. That Thank God for all things. Amen. Amen. That's right. And always give Him the glory as God. Amen. Every Christmas time, Americans want to hang up that sign on earth. Peace and goodwill toward men. 
The actual announcement was glory to God in the highest right. and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. No glory to God, no peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Amen. You will get peace on this earth when God gets glory. Amen. Amen. You can't kick him out of schools and kick him out of the home and even kick him out of the church and kick him out of the government, give him no glory, no thanks, and expect things to work out for the best. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know what you should do the next time you're at a restaurant? <coughs> I do this. I used to do it all the time. Not as much anymore. Look at all the people in that restaurant stuffing their face with as many hungry people as there are in this world. That Bible says give thanks for all men. Doesn't it? Give thanks for all men. Look at all them people stuffing their faces with the creatures of God who didn't ever, never even stop for one second to give Him thanks for it and just stop and give thanks for everybody in there feeding their face. God will bless you for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give thanks. What happens when we don't? Look, here's what happens. We become stupid. Verse 22. That's what it says. Yeah. They quit giving God glory as God. They became, uh, they weren't thankful. They became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. A nation that doesn't give God glory and is not thankful becomes foolish. It's yeah. where America is now. They can't, they can't solve one problem. With Amen. That. They can't fix the economy. They can't, they can't fix the uh, 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 the. The, the problem we have with, with all the bastard children, they can't, they can't fix the problem. We, it's a funny thing to me when they kick God out of everything, everything went... Yep. And every year at campaign time, you got a politician up there telling you how he's going to fix it, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I know how to fix it. Give God glory and give God, give God thanks and teach your children about it. Amen. Simple enough. They want to debate abortion at home. All those issues take care of themselves when God gets glory. Amen? That's a little rant. Look, look, verse 23. They change the glory of God into an image made like a corruptible man. Let's give God our ways. Let's make God in our image. As Nietzsche said, well, I believe it was Nietzsche, uh, said that God made man in His image and then man returned the favor. And made God... In our image. That's what, every time you say this, folks, when you're dealing with a preacher that knows the book and he's teaching the book and he's telling you what it says, every time you say, I think or I feel, you're molding God in your own image. Amen. What's the result? What does God do? He gives them up to uncleanness. The first sign God's given a nation up for being unthankful, not giving Him glory, the, the first sign of it is sexual immorality. Look at it there. That's what it said. God gave them up to uncleanness, to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies amongst themselves. That happened in the 60s in America. Is that when it happened? Yeah. The 50s didn't have a problem. 60s rolled around. When did they start taking prayer out of school? Sixties. Sexual immorality started running rampant. Hippies, free sex. Then in the seventies and eighties, sexually transmitted diseases were out of control. <laughs> you ain't gonna beat him. Amen. You're not gonna beat him, folks. Second sign God's given up a nation is up there in verse twenty-six. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. I ain't scared to say it. Vile affections. Right. At least a man being drawn to a woman is natural. Right. Now God gave us laws to govern it, but it's natural for a man to lust after a woman. It's what the Bible calls natural affection. But he wrote about a generation that would be without natural affection. It's vile affections. 
Homosexuality is the second sign that God has gave you up. Do we have them both in America? Amen. Well, let me show you the not too distant future. In fact, it's already here outside your doors. So America first, the first thing America did was they molded God into their own image. They took His ways and, and gave our ways to Him and said, this is how God is. Started molding Him up here in their mind. The God that most people know <laughs> only exists in their mind. Amen. The second thing they did was change the truth of God into a lie. They've been rewriting this Bible two times a year for the last 100 years. Just keep changing His Word and revert the Scriptures. Now we're to a point, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Reprobate. Don't know good. They wouldn't know light from darkness. They wouldn't know good and evil. They can't. There's, there's just nothing but reprobates in America. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 don't hurt that eagle egg. Don't hurt that eagle egg. That's an endangered species. No, it's an egg. It's what you say. Because they will, they will scrape a three-month-old baby out of the womb and sell its body parts. Amen. Reprobate. Amen. A man with another man. Reprobate. You don't know it's wrong? You're a reprobate. Anybody that would justify that is reprobate. Amen. I don't care. People will watch these videos. If you think it's okay, you're reprobate. Amen? Right. You think it's okay to sleep with a child? You're a reprobate. And we're getting to that point. A lot of the liberal states have already dropped the age of consent to 15 years old. Reprobate. Amen. Let, letting kids get sex changes at 13, 14 years old. Reprobates. Right. That Bible's evil, but your 12-year-old can go from a boy to a girl. Yeah. The Bible's wrong. It has no place in the school, but it's okay to kill a child. Come on. The Bible's evil and Jesus Christ belongs nowhere. Reprobate. Amen. Amen. Yep, yep. That's America today. Right. So it's not God bless America. Amen. God's done with her. He's done showed you three times He gave them up. Gave them up. Gave them over. He's done. Amen. That's it. With your country. Why? Because you didn't give Him glory and you didn't thank Him. Amen. He's done. Amen. Amen. And the result is, is you get Obamas and Hillary Clintons and George W. Bushes to run your country. Yep. Trump. Evil, Luciferian Satanists. Amen. That's what you get. You don't get George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. You don't get those men no more. You get Satanists. Right. Yep. Thank you. Have a good day, America. Yeah. Amen. Look at what he says. Look at verse 29. These are the things God says is worthy of death. I want you to get this. Romans 1 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, guilty. I'm, I'll tell you, I'm guilty. Wickedness, guilty. Covetousness, guilty. Maliciousness, guilty. Full of envy, guilty. Murder, if hatred is murder, guilty. Debate, guilty. Deceit, guilty. Malignity, what is that? To be maligned. I'm probably guilty. <laughs> Whisperers, whisperers. Talk behind people's back. Guilty. Yeah. Backbiters, that's somebody that bites back all the time. They're super sensitive. You can't say nothing to them without them biting back. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful. <laughs> I've done things for spite. Proud. I want you to think about that one. Proud. Every time you turn around, another group in America is having a pride march. Yeah. Amen. Zombie pride, gay pride, and women's pride. Proud. 
Then a Christian goes out and preaches on the street and they, you belong in the church. I've I seen a guy preaching at a gay march in Canada and this woman said, it's, it's wrong what you're doing. I said, I got as much right to be here as you. She said, what? But, but you, you're a preacher. You belong in a church. He said, you belong in a bedroom. <laughs> Not on a street. Amen. They're stupid. Amen. They're proud boasters, inventors of evil things. You know, like free pornography on the internet. Amen. The atomic bomb. Inventors of evil things. Right. Without understanding. Get that. God said if you don't understand, you're guilty of death. What do you think about that? Isn't that something? Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, there they are again, without natural affection, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are what? Worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They want you to do it with them. And they have pleasure in people who do it. Amen? Are they, what are they worthy of? If you're without understanding, what are you worthy of according to Romans 1.32? Death. Death. If you're despiteful and proud and boastful, what are you worthy of? Death. If you're full of envy and deceit and covetousness, what are you worthy of? Death. Death. That's the wrath of God revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. They're worthy of death. Amen. You want the proof? Just visit your local family cemetery. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Right. I remember when I preached at my grandmother's funeral. My grandmother. I said this about my own grandmother. I said I'm not going to waste five minutes talking about this woman. Because the fact she's laying lifeless in a box proves she was nothing. Because that was going to be the only chance I ever got to talk to some of my family about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Why would I waste five minutes talking about a dead woman? Amen. I loved her with all my heart. Y'all might think that's cold, but it's just cold fact. Amen. I loved her to death. But they're worthy of death. What? Her own son agrees with that statement. Somebody else was allowed to get mad at that. All right, chapter 2, verse 1. I'm, I'm going to put this in perspective for you, what's going on here. Y'all going to have to start reading fast with me. I went and visited a man one time, trying to, trying to witness to him, get him saved. He was sitting there baking up a fishing pole. And I said, uh, said you ever been saved? He said, no. Said, anybody ever told you how to be saved? He said, I'm going to stop you right there, young man. He said, why I see it, if God's so good, why does He let all this bad stuff happen to these kids? God had a Masonic ring on. They go around building children's hospitals and all that stuff and think they're better than God. Amen? Yeah. He said, why do they let all that bad stuff happen to them kids? You know what I said? This was a big guy, man. I was, I was a little shaky. I looked down and said, well, you're so concerned about them kids suffering, you're going to go fishing. Put his head down, he said, you got me there, don't you? People think they're more righteous than God. Yeah. What, that, what that man didn't understand is if God starts judging wicked works, who will escape the judgment of God? Amen. That man wants God to start punishing all these other men and he thinks that he will escape it. Amen. And this is what Paul's getting ready to talk about in chapter 2. I just read you the list of who's worthy of death. Now he says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. Yep. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of His goodness and forbearance and long suffering, 
not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. What that stupid man could not get through his head was the fact that God wasn't, the fact that God wasn't judging all the evil he's seen was evidence that God was giving he himself a time to repent. Amen. And a time to be saved. Judgment is coming. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, Thou heard me in an accepted time and secured me. And Paul said, Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be the day of judgment. Right. Amen. Amen. But when he comes to judge, it'll be in, it'll be in truth. Amen. And thinkest thou this, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Alright? Look in verse uh, 6, chapter 2. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. How would you like that? I would. I'll tell you what, I'm chicken. I'm scared to death, folks. I've got, I mean, I've had, I've had my bouts with God. He's not your grandpa. Nope. He's not this gray bearded, lovely little goofy man sitting up in heaven with Cain, you know, I love you. Comes head on my lap. He's holy. Amen. He's righteous. He's wise. Amen. And he's fearful. When God wants you to be scared, there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's right. I've been through this. I've went through that for close to a year one time. Maybe two years. Where I couldn't sleep. I couldn't enjoy my kids, my wife, nothing. I would come home so scared and I'd be like, come on, let's, let's play a game. Let's play a game. I just wanted to get my mind off of it. Nope. I go to bed. Nightmares. When He wants you to be scared, you're going to be scared. Amen. Until you get what He wants you to get. Amen. He's not a being to be messed with. Amen? Look in chapter 3. This one, this went, this is where we're trying to get to. You understand where mankind is. We're getting ready to see where mankind really is. You included. If you were the only person alive on the world, Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 20 would read the same way that it does right now. If you were the only person alive, Amen? Look at it. Romans 3, 9. What then? Are we better than they? He's talking about Jews and Gentiles. Are the Jews better than the Gentiles? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Now what's he, how's he going to prove it? Using Old Testament Scripture. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. You see that? How does God view mankind as unrighteous? Amen. What's the next thing He says about it? There is none that understandeth. They're all foolish or stupid. Got it? That's God's view of you. He looks at you down here and the way you think. How many of y'all think every day and all day? Your mind never stops. And God's looking at our entire thought process and said there's none that understandeth. There's not one man down here in all his thoughts that understands. Isn't that something to think about? Yeah. Wow. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. Amen. There's none that seeketh after God. Amen. Roman Catholic, Islam, whatever religion you want to throw out there, it's, it's just a creation of man. It's not man seeking after God. Amen. When I got saved, God sought me. Amen. Amen? That's right. Amen. And then even after I got saved, I go about my life and He seeks me. Amen. Amen? Yeah. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. You see that? They're worthless. How do you like God's view of you? Unrighteous, stupid, and worthless. How do you like God? But it's positive. Yeah. It's a positive book. <coughs> I don't know. Last time I checked, these words right here were negatives. No, not, none. 
<laughs> Those are negative words. <laughs> Amen? And you're not supposed to use a double negative. But God uses double negatives all through here. No, not one. <laughs> the only way one gives point across is how negative we are. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. There's none good. You've never done good according to God. It's bad. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. He says they're liars. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of bitterness, cursing, and bitterness. I mean, have y'all heard that in your life? I mean, you go to Wendy sometimes and you hear some people in there damning everything from the from the cheeseburger to the cook. Just cursing and bitterness. Right? Yeah. He says they're bitter. Their full of, mouth is full of cussing. Cursing. Destruction and misery are in their ways. All their ways lead to destruction and misery. If you don't believe it, ask Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If you don't believe it, ask Berlin and Stalingrad and Leningrad. Ask Warsaw, Poland. Ask London. Ask Paris, France. Ask Austria and Hungary if destruction and misery are not in the ways of man. Destruction at the way of peace they have not known. No fear of God before their eyes. No fear of God. No fear of God. That's God. That's what He says about us. Unrighteous, foolish, worthless, none good, lying, bitter, miserable, unfearful people. Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you something. you got a lot to be scared of. Amen. Man can't even outlive an oak tree. You show up and you're gone. Yeah. Like that. And people walk around with shirts. Remember the shirts in the 90s? No fear. Yeah. You're an idiot. Amen. Watch a video today where a guy was doing parkour. How I many you know what parkour is? That aggressive walking stuff. He did a backflip on a ledge on a 16 story building. When he landed, he stumbled and went over the building. Dead. No fear. My foot. You better get scared. Amen. Amen. Now what can we what can we conclude about this? Here's what Paul's going to conclude. Look at verse 19. Just bear with me for a few minutes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, that saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may become guilty before God. Whatever the law said, God knew what sin was. God put sin there to make us guilty. I mean, I mean if there's, I have to explain it like this. If they build a road and don't put a speed limit sign on it, and I'm doing 90, that's stupid. So in order to make me guilty, they put a speed limit, 55. Now I'm guilty when I go over 55. This is what you are with or without the law of God. Amen. God gave the law to stop your mouth and to make you guilty before Him. You understand. Now, if the law makes us guilty, let me ask you something. Thou shall not bear false witness. What, how many have lied? How many people have lied? Told a lie. That law made you guilty before God. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. I mean, men's guilty. You know, at least a couple of honest ones in here. You've coveted your neighbor's wife before, Mom? I think we need to go back to chapter 1. <laughs> oh, Mom. I thought you still wanted right. to If God said you should not covet your neighbor's wife and you have, it makes you guilty before God. Now, if we're, if the law makes us guilty before God, Paul makes a conclusion in verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified, there it is, in his sight. 
For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You cannot be declared guilt, guiltless before God. You cannot be declared free of guilt before God by the law. Right. It's an impossibility because the law makes you guilty. It's that simple. But I believe once we're saved, we've got to keep it. Do you? How many of y'all agree with that statement? We can't. It's an impossibility to keep God's law today. A lot of it involved going to a temple in Jerusalem that ain't even standing anymore. God was so done with the old covenant that He just tore it down and made it vanish off the earth. Jews can't even serve God according to the way the Old Testament tells them. Right. I had this Jewish man, Jamie debated him for a long time, this man on there talking about how they had, had to keep the law. And I finally went on Facebook and I said, you liar, you've never kept Deuteronomy 16.21 a day in your life. I never heard a reply from him. Deuteronomy 3.21 says that the males have to go to Jerusalem three times a year. He ain't been once. Amen? We, we live, we're... we're Folks, this is about justification. When we get to how do we live after we're saved, we live not by the oldness of the letter, but by the newness of the Spirit. Right. There is righteousness in you and gives you all the righteousness of the law. I can't write. Listen, folks, let me get you all to get this. You cannot legislate righteousness. Amen. You cannot make a law to make people righteous. No. I can, I can sit here and write up here and say there's a dress code in this church and if everybody follows that dress code, what have we accomplished? That doesn't make people righteous. They're just obeying a rule. True righteousness comes from purity of mind, heart, Amen. and it's a change that God does inside of us. I let people live according to the Holy Spirit and by the grace of God. Amen. He's better than me. Amen. And if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, He'll do more for you on how to live than I ever could. Amen? Amen. So, wouldn't this be sad if the story ended here? God said, this is what they all are, and by my law I cannot declare them free of guilt because they're all guilty. Wouldn't it be a sad ending? Yep. You know what we would do then? Let us eat and drink. Be merry for tomorrow we die. Mm -hmm. Right? But look at verse 21, my favorite word in all the Bible. But, <laughs> look at verse 21, but now, but now the righteousness of God without what? Is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. This is where I get upset with fundamental preachers. Right here. Will God save a queer? Yeah. Will God save a murderer? Yeah. Will God save a, 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 a prostitute? Yeah. Would He have saved Adolf Hitler? Yeah. Would he save Charles Manson today? Yeah. Would he have saved Ted Bundy? Mm -hmm. Would he would he save a child rapist? Yeah. Look at what it just said in verse 22 again. It is upon all, it is unto all and upon all them that believe. Why? For there is no difference. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. I don't care how short you came, you came up short. Right. Because what you're looking for is absolute guiltlessness. You're looking for God to look at you one day and say, you have no guilt. And I don't care if you murdered 15 people or just lied and fornicated. You have guilt, so you come up short of the mark. Here's an analogy I use all the time. I'll be done here in about 15, 20 minutes. I promise. Here's an analogy I get. What if God said, in order to make it to heaven, 
you have to jump from the east coast of the United States to England. What if that's what God said? So this, is, I mean, this is an analogy. And everybody took off running and jumped. You had all these people out here in different marks. And I'm going to show you something with this. One man jumps five feet, another man jumps 15 feet, another man jumps 20 foot. One man might jump halfway across. <laughs> Not going to happen. But let's say a man jumps way out here. And then at the end of the day, he looks back and says, I've got this. He missed the mark, folks. You understand, he missed the mark. Everybody missed the mark. And let me tell you something. Usually the people that jump the furthest are in the deepest water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The soccer moms and the daddies who work, take care of their kids, and don't, don't drink, don't cuss, don't do this, they don't do that. They, they're good fathers, good mothers, love their kids, take care of them, always provide for them. And then they look at the, the, the drug addict and the, and the drunk and the and the prostitute and say, I'm a, I'm a model citizen in this world. Yep. They're comparing themselves to everything they see around them and because they're better than everybody else, they must be all right with God. Yep. Those are the people that rarely see their need of Christ. Amen. We went, we went soul winning one time down in North Carolina. And this guy met us at his driveway and said, we don't need that nonsense here. Y'all take that to the poor neighborhoods. We don't need it here. We're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. It's what Jesus said. Amen. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Amen. It's so much easier, folks. I, I used to go to a mission in Charleston. I preached in churches before where people were like this. And I'd go, I'd go down to Charleston at that homeless shelter down there. My brother's been with me. Guys sitting there glassy eyed. You can tell they, some of them are half lit. Some of them have problems with drugs. Other